The Unshackled Waves, Episode 12. Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms and it's our interview show for this week and we are very lucky to have as our guest this week uh, Brendan Preston from Zero Filter which can be found at zero-filter.com. It's a like-minded new media website such as ours which publishes an alternative take on on the news both here in Australia and around the world. So welcome Brendan. Thanks for having me on, uh, Tim. And uh, uh, Zero Filter are good, good, good friends of ours. Sukath and I were uh, uh, were the first guests on on their first episode of the Zero Filter show. So we thought we'd invite Brendan on to to be guest on our show and talk about uh, Zero Filter, and of course talk about the the new media in general. So we'll we'll start from the beginning. So tell us how you came to start Zero Filter. Well, again, cheers for having me on, Tim. I guess, um, you know, what, what's really happened is I say, I'll give you a bit of a background of myself. About five years ago, I got into, uh, you know, I somehow just stumbled across Infowars. I reckon my dad was, was looking at Infowars, and that's what really sort of, um, you know, started me off and, and I really delved into the sort of um, conspiracy sort of side of things. And it, it was really non political, my uh, outlook back then. So, um, you know, I was just basically, I was against the New World Order, against globalism, against, uh, you know, uh, sort of the, you know, fake wars sort of in the Middle East and uh, uh, really just liked hearing about sort of, you know, all the different things to do with, you know, vaccines or, or uh, you know, all those sort of topics. But um, uh, as I said, it wasn't really political, it was just against uh, sort of globalism sort of in general. But, um, you know, recently, obviously, in the last year with, you know, with Trump starting, Trump came along and and uh, this is the first time I really looked into politics myself because I wasn't really sort of up to date with Australian politics sort of either at that stage, you know, in the sort of the last few years. But, <clears throat> you know, Trump's come along and, and, you know, you've got people like Breitbart endorsing him. You've got people like Infowars sort of uh, endorsing him. So I thought, you know, these guys never usually endorse uh, any sort of, um, uh, you know, political figure um, you know, wholeheartedly, they all sort of, you know, I th- sort of thought that the political system was um, sort of uh, dead and there's no change that can come from the political system. Um, I stumbled, you know, Trump sort of opened me up into this whole sort of, uh, that's how I kind of found the new sort of conservative right that was sort of uh, you know Stephen Crowder and, and Mike Cernovich and, and these characters people that you you know sort of relate to the alt right now and uh, you know thought that it was uh, you know such a fantastic sort of movement it's not you know exactly right wing uh, movement there are people from the left that are sick of it that would probably identify with with the right um, but basically it was just anti-political correctness you know throwing a bomb into the system and really trying to uh, destroy the left's sort of political correctness that is happening for the third, past 30 years. And, uh, you know, then, now this is, I sort of discovered that, you know, this was happening in Australia, you know, through people like Pauline Hanson coming uh, coming along, through people like Corey Bernardi in Adelaide and, and Mark Latham and Andrew Bolt. These people are sort of championing, championing the uh, sort of fight against political correctness in Australia. And I just, you know, I couldn't, you know, recently I just sort of was overwhelmed with all this stuff. And I just wanted to delve straight into it and really take part and, and do something. And I have a lot of thoughts that I wanted to, you know, put across to people. And there was definitely a market now that I believe um, for, you know, conservatives that have had their um, platforms, you know, shut down. You know, it's, you know, coming out as a conservative is, is harder than coming out as a gay or, or <laughs> like a, or, or a lesbian or something these days. So that's why I wanted to. Um, really, you know, give these give the conservatives a voice because there is a right wing movement sort of happening. Um, it's about it's really about Western culture and preserving Western culture 
against such things as cultural Marxism and, and, and the spread and, of Islam and, and these sorts of things. So Zero Filter is basically a reaction to political correctness and it's getting a whole lot of uh, uh, traffic already. So it's definitely, you know, filling the void. So how have you found the experience so far? You mentioned that you're getting quite a bit of tra uh, traffic, so you're pleased with the, the progress so far. How long have you ha has Zero Filter been, been up for? Well, it's probably only been up for about a couple of months now. Um, for about a few months, I've had, uh, uh, you know, when I started doing this, I made it a, a couple of videos, and this wasn't really through Zero Filter. It was just me uh, really just putting up a, a couple of video, you know, trying to make a few videos to, to chuck on YouTube and, and see what kind of, uh, you know, viewing that they'd get. One, the first one was the, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, the truth about Pauline Hanson and Islam. And the other one was uh, the truth about gun control in Australia. And, you know, they've got many views now. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, they're both up to about sort of 20,000 views. Um, so I thought, wow, you know, this is huge. People, I, I, you know, if you think that gun control is not a big issue in Australia, you're dead wrong because that's the most uh, popular video that I uploaded, right? So I thought, you know, this is definitely a, an avenue to go down here. So I thought the experience has been really good. I've been contacted by heaps of people, you, uh, X, Y, Z, um, you know, other places, you know, the, the I think it's the United Conservative Party. Um you know, United Patriots Front, I've, I've spoken with, with those guys, and there's a real sort of unity uh, of, you know, wanting to move together and, and to basically take the country back because it's been, you know, it's been just stole, it's been hijacked by these leftist neo-Marxist elitists that have no consideration for um, <clears throat> Australian tradition or Australian sort of values. Um, so the traction, I mean, it's huge because uh, a lot of, um, you know, general Australians are attracted to this movement. Yeah, I definitely believe that 2016 has been sort of the great awakening. I mean, it's, it obviously started uh, in America uh, with with Trump, but yeah, certainly uh, it's it's catching on in Australia as well. But uh, unfortunately, sort of our political <laughs> leaders uh, uh many of them are still not paying attention. Uh, I'll move on to my next question. So what are your plans from here with uh, Zero Filter? Would you like to make it a commercial venture eventually? Well, yeah, I definitely, definitely would. Um, I mean, what I'm focusing on right now is really just trying to get as much content up uh, as possible and um, really just sort of have a presence on Facebook and, and, and the internet and, uh, you know, get, get as many sort of followers in, involved as possible. Um, what I really want to do is actually this is uh, come along to something this weekend that's happening this weekend that I'm going to be doing actually um, is we've you know me and if there's a we've have, I've got a few contributors com regular contributors who are um, you know writing articles for me and that sort of thing we're putting it on the website because they have their own blogs but I thought let's you know let's get together and, and put it up together. Um, what I want to do is I want to actually get out on the street and, and talk to people face to face and, and you know, record it and, and get people's, you know, basically get their opinion on the, on the street because you can't, you can only know so much about what's going on in Australia behind a laptop. You need to get out there and speak with people. So we've got a, there's a uh, rally on Saturday on the uh, Parliament House steps in Adelaide and it's, uh, called let them in or let the refugees in and it's, you can you can imagine the uh, type of well if it's been anything like what we've seen this week then yeah a lot of a lot of pink and purple hair a um, lot of a lot of piercings maybe a few tattoos trash tramp stamps basically <laughs> there's going to be a few um, and yeah we're going to go there so obviously it's a, uh, it's a it's a you know let them all in drop the borders the refugees are going to come in. Um, so this is what, you know, we need to get out there and speak with these people and say, well, look, yes, I, you know, two days ago, yesterday or whatever it was, there were people, you know, those activists who had glued their hands to, to rails in, in protest of, of immigrants coming to Australia. On the same day, an immigrant, uh, sorry, a refugee raped someone on Nauru, in Nauru. So... This is the hypocrisy of the left. Of the, well, it's not even the massive left. It's it's the Marxist left, the radical left, 
who just don't understand simple facts of borders. They just want to rip the borders down. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, – me and my little brother who's going to be uh, the, the cameraman, we're going to go down there and we're just going to speak to people. We're not going to hassle them. We're just going to ask for honest and open debate. And we're going to film it. We're going to put it on YouTube and see see how it goes. Because we want, um, we're going to do re these things regularly. We want to get out there uh, to these events. I mean, it's just Marxist event after Marxist event after Marxist event goes unchallenged. It's garbage. You know, Marxism was referred to as the biggest poison that's ever uh, been a part of the Western world. It, it's about bringing down Western values. And, you know, they're standing on Parliament steps with no uh, backlash. So we're going to go there and just talk to them. We're going to see what their uh, their answers are. We're going to see if they can, uh, you know, hold down some kind of a debate. And, um, yeah, just want people to see what's happening on the streets of Australia rather than just uh, what's happening in, in Parliament House and that sort of thing. Yeah, that certainly sounds like a, yeah, it would be be very interesting and yeah, that's very brave of you there to to go down and and interview them because yeah, uh, from what I've what I've seen of their their rallies, they're not very friendly. Oh, they're not very friendly, but you know, when they work in packs, you know, they they like animals basically. <laughs> they work in packs and um, you know, if I was talk to one of them, they basically when they talk to someone who's on the right, a Trump supporter, they shrivel up, get scared. I, I probably predict that we won't even get any debate out of them. They'll just sort of curl up and cry. But hopefully we can get someone who's willing to talk about why they're there. I mean, I actually – this is I'll tell you a quick story. So I came um, – on last Friday night we're at a um, – I was walking through Rundle Mall, and this is just Adelaide, Adelaide sort of shopping district. And at the front of Rundle Mall, there's a, a stall there, and it had "Dump Trump" written on it. And there was about ten people running around, sort of signing petitions. I don't know what they're going to do about dumping Trump when he's not the Prime Minister of Australia. I'm not sure what sort of change they're they're willing to they're trying to make. But um, I went there and I said, "Look, um, oh hey guys, how are you going? What are you what are you doing here?" And they just said, "Oh, we're doing this and blah blah blah." And they had Karl Marx. Um, Testament books, and they had, uh, um, you know, Lenin, the revolutionary, and all these sort of socialist, communist books. And I said, um, uh, so I'm I'm a little bit of a fan of Donald Trump. And three of them just completely went, uh, eyes were peeled, and just started yelling at me and calling me a racist and this sort of stuff. Um, and it was just unbelievable. I just tried to talk to them, and then I, after I sort of gave him a bit of um, grief, um, it was barely anything. I just started. Just, talking to them about facts, they all packed up in light of me and they just couldn't even back up their views. Another thing that I'll point out is that they were selling Karl Marx books, but they were against capitalism. So they want to take advantage of the benefits of capitalism, but when it comes to uh, the bad things, like obviously not earning any money because they probably don't have any job, don't have a job, they want free handouts. So this is this is what we're dealing with here. Uh, I, it sounds like it's it's still pretty bad in Adelaide. I mean, I'm in Melbourne, which is the home of the the socialist alternative. Um, you probably heard about the well, one nation private event that was was just well, had to be cancelled uh, for yes. for this weekend because oh, the police they basically said, "Oh, we can't can't do our job." Yeah, Antifa, I think it was the left wing radical, uh, the the Marxist violent whatever they are, masked individuals. Uh, so the new media, or the alt-right media as they're called, uh, received some free publicity uh, here in Australia last, uh, last weekend with an article in the Fairfax Press titled uh, Keyboard Warriors of the Alt-Right, which was obviously meant to uh, attack us. I'm sure uh, you saw the article. So what was your reaction to that? Well, out of all the articles that I have seen about sort of the alt right coming to Australia, I actually, you know, be honest with you, it was almost, it was actually not that bad in terms of attacking us. It was just a headline that looked terrible. I'm not sure the guy actually realised if he was trying to do a hatchet job because he just gave X Y Z and the unshackled probably heaps and heaps of traffic. Yeah, I was. Uh, I woke up Sunday morning and our stats went through the roof. It was incredible. Yeah, exactly. So. 
you know, normally I don't like to sort of, you know, I wouldn't like to, you know, take part in the left media. I really just want to boycott it. But um, when it back, as we all know, it's uh, whenever the left has tried to sort of ridicule this alt right movement, it's just totally backfired on themselves. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I saw the word racist in there somewhere. I probably there was probably white supremacists there. Oh, there, there were. They interviewed some academic who was an expert on it, and he said, "Oh, yeah, they're all you know racist and Nazis." That's basically what he said. So they they th- they threw in that uh, uh, that guy in there to say that. Yeah, I love these. Yeah, they'll interview like an 80 year old political analyst to analyze the new alt right. Who, um, yeah. Who's got a picture of Karl Marx, you know, next to his bed, basically? And it's, you know, they're in the way that it was actually written. They're just not in touch with the. You can just tell they're not in touch with the youth. They're they're not um, understanding where the alt right's even coming from. They haven't they haven't left. As I said, they haven't left their desk. They haven't left the computer. They're not out there talking to people. They're not in. Um, uh, you know, they're not actually watching um, what we're doing. They're not watching Trump videos. They're just watching it through CNN, MSNBC, Channel 9, 7 and 10. Um, they don't know what to do with it. I thought the article um, just was pointless. It didn't, you know, it, and it was an important article because they've, they've, they've named you guys. They've caught that and they obviously, you know, called out to me, but I didn't respond. XYZ told me, you know, they didn't, uh, they didn't respond. You responded. So oh, wait. Like, we, uh, I actually did, uh, I only saw the email uh, a couple of days later, and so by the time I did get back to them, it was was par- past the deadline, so uh, I was worried, oh, we you know, missed out, but then, yeah. Oh, on, right. Yeah, on on Sunday, I was like, oh, wow, they still still mentioned us after all. Well, maybe that's a blessing in disguise, you know. They, um, uh, you know, they, they listened to our podcast, and they, and they quoted it, uh, so, but obviously, I don't want to, you know, kiss the left's ass and go, oh yeah, we got, you know, onto the, uh, onto a little article here. I mean, what we're trying to, do, you know, is, uh, illustrate here is that they because the alt right is still sort of coming into Australia, and there's two versions of the alt right that we should actually explain soon that we get into. But when you talk about the alt right, we're talking about the conservative, the alternative conservatives, really, the people against political correctness. So um, they are. Trying to frame it before the peop- before Australians start to research it themselves, because obviously, I think that if Trump supporters, if Paul Joseph Watson, Mike Cernovich, Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, jumped over into into a, in a plane and, and came into Australia right now, became citizens, they'd be voting for Pauline Hanson, in my opinion. She's, she is the champion of this. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I definitely think. I mean, there, there's all, there's all the talk, uh, uh, the time about will we see uh, Trump in Australia? I mean, yeah, I, I'd agree that Pauline is probably the 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 closest to it. I mean, obviously there's uh, Corey Bernardi as well. Uh, I know Mark Latham's name's been thrown around quite a bit. Yeah, definitely. On that note, I'm looking forward to Mark Latham's supposed new show on Sky News. Ah, oh, yes, the, apparently the uh, the white male show, as it's been called. Yeah, you know, junkie. I think they said this is just what we need another uh, white ma- another show with white male conservatives. There's only one show with white male conservatives. Every other show is non-white male conservatives. The only show is Andrew Bolt, which gets ridiculed on a daily basis. But um, you know that this is really, you know. Relating it back here, there's, there is, when it comes to Australia, there's no real bright bar and info wars at the moment. Yeah. And that's happening. It, you know, they've got their English sort of American factions, but it hasn't come, it hasn't filtered down to Australia just yet. I would say the closest thing is Andrew Bolt. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's us. It's zero filter. It's the unshackled. It's X, Y, Z. It's these homegrown, organic, um, you know, operations that have come from our youth who are seeing the, uh, the, you know, sort of feeling at first hand what this political correctness is doing. You know, you've got Sukath at university, we've got us young guys, um, and this is, you know, when you, when you look at these little social justice warriors and Marxists who are towing the, the left's sort of um, line, um, they're... You know, they're you know generally between sort of twenty and twenty five, and and these are the people that we have to associate on a daily basis. So, um, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why we are the new, the new yeah. movement. I mean, that's, yeah, I obviously saw the success of, yeah, Breitbart and, and Infowars and uh, saw that there was, yeah, there, were, there was no real, uh, uh, you know, the new right, uh, new conservatives, they weren't being catered to in Australia. I mean, I could probably name about 100 uh, le left-wing sites. I mean, we've got what, BuzzFeed, Mamma Mia, Crikey, uh, New Matilda, I mean, uh, ju just to name a few, I mean, pretty much the the left is is saturated. Yet, uh, I would argue that yeah, uh, conservatives are probably the majority in this country. Yet, there's there's no way for them to really get much news. And the important thing is here to know is that the you know these new left wing sort of or well, these left wing media websites are really pushed by. Uh, and aided by the obviously um, the mainstream media, you know, carrying this narrative of, of political correctness and and that sort of thing as well. But you know what needs to be understood is that you obviously you know the internet's filled with this left wing Marxist garbage. But the you do a poll of Australians, um, you know, in Queensland, asking them, um, do you think Pauline Hanson addresses issues better than Malcolm Turnbull and Bill Shorten, and you get forty nine percent agreeing. Uh, saying that yes, Hanson would would do a better job. Then Channel Seven straight afterwards do a poll on their website saying, "Do you think Pauline Hanson would make a better prime minister than Malcolm Turnbull?" And this is straight from you know the horse's mouth. This is on Channel 7's poll. This happened. It happens on their polls all the time. Um, that was somewhere around 75 to 80 percent believe that Pauline Hanson would be a better prime minister than them. So this just goes to show this is the people speaking. Um, you know. Yeah, uh, I, I mean it's it's interesting when these polls come out. I mean, there's there's all this shock. What what all these people? Are, and because a lot of the the mainstream media and the politicians, they they tend to live in their echo chamber where they think everyone's uh, like them. And yet when they when they actually do well, uh, not just polls, but in actual elections result, they're they're shocked by the outcomes. And so definitely. Uh, I, know, I know the term "silent majority" is is used a lot, but it's it's definitely certainly true. Yeah, it's definitely though. You know, those polls, especially, are showing that it's true. Are are massive increase in numbers since the time we started two months ago, uh, is is proof of that. So, um, yeah, the left's been discredited. It's garbage. Uh, it's us that are going to be championing the uh, new, the new movement. It's the, no matter what. Um, brand they put on it no matter how much they try to paint it as, as something else uh it's happening all over the world people want change and and the um yeah the alt-right media is taking off and it will continue to grow and of course this was uh in the in the article as well and uh the accusation that's made about the the new media or the alt-right media is that we uh produce fake news they're saying oh you know don't don't mm -hmm. visit these sites because it's it, it, it's all fake i mean yeah, what's your response to that well you can't really take that seriously all you have to do is just look at the history of of mainstream news um you know let, let's look at america's mainstream news let's look at cnn MSNBC and all these, obviously, you know who they are. Um, you know, these are the same media organisations that uh, told you that, you know, Iraq had uh, weapons of mass destruction. Now, that fake news led to the death of, led to an, you know, a war that was terrible, led to the death of hundreds of thousands of innocent Iraqis and Afghanis and people in the Middle East. Um, yes, there are stupid fake news websites on the right that nobody pays attention to whatsoever they're all left trolls anyway and they have proven to be left trolls um so they are the kings of fake news we saw recently uh, paul joseph watson covered it recently when um uh, cnn interviewed that guy on the street saying that they should you know hillary should sue america i mean oh, a, yes a you can't do that i mean let's have some cognitive ability here and b um, he was actually the cameraman for CNN, so they just took him around and, and interviewed him. So they, they are fake news. So what it is is just they're just calling other people what they are. And now that it's come out that they are fake news, they've just completely discredited themselves. And, um, you know, there is no fake – yes, there's, you know, 
provocative news on the right, but it's it's not fake news. It's the, it's the real news. I mean, the perfect example of the mainstream media promoting fake news was when they uh, were reporting on all those uh, fake hate crimes in in, Tr in Trump's America. I mean, uh, f uh, uh, journalists who actually did proper fact checking found that you know none of them could be, or hardly any of them, could be backed up. And how you know how could we how could I live this out? I mean, WikiLeaks show that there were literally dozens of people who were working with the mainstream media colluding with the Hillary Clinton campaign, and you know Channel Ten supported Hillary, Channel Nine supported Hillary. SBS is should be nicknamed Social Justice News Network. Um, you know they, you know, hammer and tongs went after Trump and and not Hillary. You know it came out that actually CNN in these um, you know, the left media actually knew that there were agitators at um, Trump's rallies to, you know, try and start fights to make the Trump supporters look bad. That was done and paid for by the Hillary campaign. And, of course, you know, the CNN knew about it. Of course, John Podesta and people like that knew about it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're totally discredited. Uh, so we've talked a bit about uh, the the alt right, but uh, let's uh, let's talk about uh, like how would you define the term alt right, and do you consider yourself alt right? Well, that's an interesting story because um, I mean, recently of of sort of uh, I mean, it shouldn't really be a big issue, but it, it seems to uh, have been with this sort of small minority of the alt right that seems to sort of try and you know, bring everything, you know, down all the time, try and say, you know, Milo's not alt-right, Gavin McInnes, you're not alt-right, uh, you're not the queen or the king or whatever of the alt-right, but, you know, it's just this stupid infighting that should just come together. I mean, I guess the alt-right started with Richard Spencer. He did coin the term of the alt-right, but when you look at Richard Spencer and his message, it's obviously white nationalism, yeah, you know, he's got the free and open right to, to talk about white nationalism. I mean, it's it's his you know, free right to, to do that. But if you have a look at, at what is resonating within those who are classed as alt-right, um, you know, Richard Spencer gets a few thousand views on his YouTube videos that he makes, whereas, you know, Milo, Paul and Cernovich are getting hundreds of thousands, millions and millions of views. So they're really properly resonating with the right wing people who have been disenfranchised with the system. They don't care about um, black people having a lower IQ, therefore they can't live uh, near them, which is, I mean, that's a probably a simplified argument of what the alt right, what Richard Spencer's alt right is all about. But um, they don't care about that. They don't care that, you know, that it may be racial differences um, and that white people, you know, maybe can't you know, a country needs to stay predominantly white. It's about, the real alt-right is really about Western culture. It's like civic nationalism, basically. It's about, all. oh, if you live in the West, you can come to the West, but if you live in the West, you preserve its values, you want, you know, um, you, know you believe in the family, you don't believe in political correctness, you, you believe in a secure border and, in, um, and obviously, you know, capitalism and, and that sort of thing. Um, and and that's it. There's two there's two alt rights. There's a very fringe minority that are you know these white supremacists basically that are championed by Richard Spencer, who obviously do a, a doing a massive. In my opinion, they do it was done jokingly, but it was a massive disservice when they were at the National Policy Institute and there were people jokingly apparently doing the sig how. It wasn't one person like they said; it was dozens, literally dozens of people running up and doing this the sig how to you know Richard Spencer. And um, you know, fair enough if it was a joke, but you know Richard Spencer has you know tried to cover it up and and not even admit what he's all about when he's clearly about white nationalism and it's exclusive in an interview with Gavin McInnes Richard Spencer you know the the conclusion was that no that this is a white exclusive movement so essentially if you're black you're not part of it and that just is just not it's not resonating it's not attractive to the regular sort of right wingers who have been um, you know, forgotten by their parties, you know, forgotten by the re real, you know, Republicans party, forgotten by the 
here in Australia. Um, and yeah, I mean, about those racism and white, uh, you know, white supremacist sort of um, accusation. Well, no, I think I've answered the question. Yeah, uh, certainly I wasn't impressed by uh, Richard Spencer and the, the National Policy Institute, but, you know, every movement, including the, the left, uh, we should note, has their, their fringe elements, but, you know, that should never define an entire movement. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if a movement has a good message, people will be attracted to it. Nobody's, you know, very small minority attracted to Richard Spencer. You know, millions upon millions of people attracted to Trump and the proper alt right, which we both know what what it's all about: Western culture, preserving Western culture, preserving nationalism, and um, opposing, you know, Marxism and political correctness. And do you think the the rise of the the alt right um, that implies a failure of the existing leadership on the right, so failure of uh, the current uh, crop of conservative and libertarian leaders and thinkers? Yeah, well, I think it's two things. It's definitely a um, sort of reaction, uh, you know, within sort of Republican slash liberal liberal parties that you know traditional sort of right conservative. Uh, parties and their lack of uh, leadership but what it is I think it's a f the left has been in control for a very long time for the last 30 years they they control institutions they control you know education they've got their hands in everything and the right wing the uh, sort of you know, conservative supposed leaders of um, the you know liberal party and republican party have failed to react to that, they've played the the left's game. They've adhered to political correctness. They don't want to. Um, they are scared of being offensive, and what that is is that allows you. That's in, in, in essentially enabling the uh, political correctness to uh, exist. And what I think is an important sorry, I was going to say what I think it is an important sort of point to make is that when you look at. Um, <clears throat> You've got left and right, and then you've got the radical left and the supposed radical right. Now, when you look at the radical left, well, <clears throat> in Australia, I think of Ros Ward, okay? <clears throat> so Ros Ward um, is, you know, the he slash she, I'll call him, I'll call her man, I'll call her he. Right? <laughs> I, I don't think we'll, we'll she, call her he. Yeah, if she gets offended, I don't think we care. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't think we can. I mean, she looks like a, well, I don't know what she looks like. Yeah, she's a bloke, right? So, <laughs> yeah, she was, um, she's she's the architect of the Safe Schools program. Now, this is a person who assaults people who have opposing viewpoints, as we saw at the Trump um, rally in Melbourne the other, you know, a couple of weeks ago. She came up and tried to rip somebody's hat off, right? Yeah, you know, that's it's physical assault, okay? You do, that's, that's what it is. She had a copy of Red Flag in her hand. Now, Red flag, the socialist alliance and, and the socialist alternative in, in Australia, they publish articles that were praising Fidel Castro like he was a god and that he lived such a, a beautiful regime even though he was worth over – he hated capitalism. He wanted socialism for his country, although he owned over 900 – he was worth over $900 million and the, he had about 20 estates all over the world and 20 – and the people were living on an average of about $22 a month. They were fleeing Cuba, trying to leave as, as much as they could. Now, my, the point that I'm making is that Ros Ward, not only is she um, not criticised by the mainstream media and the left, right – they are, or, or institutions. She is given a platform and she's given the right to be the architect of the Safe Schools Program, which safe, safe schools program, which literally affects every single child in Australia, telling them to explore their gayness and their sexuality, sexuality at the age of four or five. Now, let's pull back from that and now let's look at the, the supposed radical right. <clears throat> now, we are considered radical right. We're not infecting institutions with uh, propaganda. We're not given any sort of a platform except for that one little article shaming us uh, on the on the age or the Sydney Morning Herald or whatever it is. So people have got to understand that it's not just alternative left, 
an alternative right. They're all equal. They hate each other. They're probably both pretty radical. The left have Antifa and are violent. They've got Ros Ward, who is given a platform and all the funding she needs to create a program that affects every single child in Australia. And it's gospel and you can't criticise it. So this is the difference between the, uh, what do you, what would you say, the standards, the double, the double standard between um, what is pushed uh, sort of in the media. And the, getting back to your question, the Conservatives in power have failed to address this. This is why we've been created now. We are a reaction to this. Um, look at Mark Latham. He was a leader of the Labor Party who are completely left and, you know, as left as you get, and you'd probably consider him radical alt-right. He was actually on the convict report the other day, which is a Richard Spencer, you know, esque show. So, I mean, it, it's interesting this this battle between um, and the, it, what this failure to address the existing leadership on the right has created. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, in in Australia, uh, liberal governments they still give money to all these leftist organisations, all these you know arts and uh, cultural institutions and uh, academia. I mean, they 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 fund their enemies all the time, and uh, I also think that you know Tony Abbott's sort of seen as. Uh, the most conservative prime minister we've we've had, but even he was uh, was quite scared to sort of take on the the, the left establishment. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's a big, it's a quite a big machine. Um, I mean, it's quite huge now, though the the radical sort of uh, difference in uh, even just in the last few years, the radical difference in ideologies between the right and the left, and how much they hate each other has evolved very very quickly. And it's becoming quite you know, nasty. And, you know, Abbott's been interviewed by, you know, Andrew Bolt recently, and he's, he's you know, he's condemning it quite um, quite harshly, actually, the, the, the left, it seems, which is, you know, a good, a good sign. Yeah. Um, uh, moving on to our next uh, question now. So obviously, uh, obviously, we've talked about the the rise of the the alt right, and it's mainly been due to the the growing totalitarianism of the of the progressive left. Do you agree that this year, twenty sixteen, has been uh, a turning point? I mean, obviously, we saw uh, Brexit earlier on, the return of Pauline Hanson, and now uh, the election of Trump. <laughs> 2016 is literally the, I think, the biggest year since, you know, 1947 when the World War was ended, you know, when the Second World War ended. This is the biggest political change um, the world has seen in, you know, 50 years. It's huge. The, it's, we've been, it's been, um, the world has been completely has gone down a leftist path of anarchy. The globalists have hijacked the left um, based on their um, on taking advantage of the left's progress, you know, generosity and progressiveness to kind of to undermine people in their own sort of Western countries like America, Australia, England. You know, ridiculously high amounts of immigration, literally trying to change the demographic of of the country. Um, now, 2016 is is a you know, you know the last 10 years, 10 15 years. I think it's probably since you know 9/11 that people have really gotten sick of how far left they have gone, um, and you know America's taken their country back, England taken their country back. When England got out of Brexit, it was all uh, doom and you know before they got out, it was all doom and gloom by the media. Uh, you're gonna your economy's gonna fail. It's this and that. After Brexit happened, you know, countries around the world were lining up to do deals with them. You don't need the, the European Union or the United Nations to be able to do deals. That just forces you to do uh, trade under their circumstances and only with the countries that they deem allowable to be able to do trade with. So if we see a with, – I think what we should do is, is – what we will see is that people like Corey Bernardi and Pauline Hanson over the next couple of years – it's going to be a domino effect. We're going to see a drastic change. I think Cory Bernardi's idea of starting a new party would be the best path 
to go down. What do you I mean? What do you think about that? Well, he's talked about it uh, uh, quite a bit, or or should I say, hinted at it. But uh, I, I've said this before. I, I still think he's biding his time in the Liberal Party. I mean, that's what being in a major party is, just biding your time. So I think he still thinks that he can sort of have an uprising within the Liberal Party itself. So I think he's okay. He's sort of playing a different <clears throat> game. Yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah, I, I guess you could say would Trump have won if he if he ran as an independent or a libertarian, um, and I guess Brexit wasn't a you know a, a two party uh, thing. Brexit was just the people voting to get out. But um, you know, Pauline Hanson, yes, you know, all these people are resonating with Pauline Hanson, but it's hard to you know sort of predict that she would ever become prime minister for One Nation because Labor and Liberal you know really just are holding it down and have the system in in a two-party system sort of lockdown. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's w what we have as well to talk about is the, the German um, uh, German election is coming up soon. Yeah, and we've got... Um, uh, what's the lady? We've also got France and also the Netherlands as well. So 2017 is you know, could be an even, even bigger year. Well, we'll see how France goes. Their, their country is far gone. I mean, it's... France is almost finished. They've just completely destroyed their own country. Um, you know, obviously, it seems like a pretty simple argument, but you know, the highest number of Muslims in any sort of European country in France, the highest number of terrorist attacks. So if they can sort that out, maybe they're on their way. And Marine Le Pen in, in Germany is a direct result, obviously, oh, in of... in France. Um, oh, sorry, is that France? Yeah. Oh, sorry, that's right. But there is something, I believe, that's happening in Germany. So uh, yes, Merkel uh, is... Yeah, the, the alternative for Germany party, Frock, Frock Petri. Ah, uh, okay. So, all right, that's it. You're probably a bit more well-versed in, in that than me, but I've just seen it. Um, I mean, it's just like a mirror image. When I see Merkel, I see Hillary Clinton. Um, and then you see the other party, and it's just the common sense party. I mean, it's just all about common sense, isn't it? You know, what is... How can you be against closed borders? I just don't, it doesn't, I, I can't understand how you can think open borders is okay. If, you know, if you look at Merkel, what does she let it look at Cologne? <clears throat> in New Year's Eve last year, there was um, people raped by the, the dozens, probably, I think it was, you know, hundreds of uh, illegal immigrants, these, you know, refugees that came in. Um, so political correctness has literally resulted in death and rape. And they don't, you know, this rise is is taking that back. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's certainly, and also we should, there's uh, Gert Wilders in the Nether Netherlands as well. So certainly, I mean, the, the uh, you would say that the the left they've they've had their had their go at uh, at you know running things, and we look at what a disaster Europe is at the moment. And so uh, we are quite lucky that uh, pe people are, or the majority of people are now are now waking up and and wanting to, to to take their countries back. Yeah, exactly. And I think you know just finally on this question before we move on, um, it's not even that the left has had their. You know, let, let's let the left have a go and see how they go, and they failed. Oh, whoopsie! You know, let's let the right have a go. <clears throat> this has been an agenda. <clears throat> you can't tell me that they had good intentions by opening the floodgates in Germany and France and letting every Tom, Dick, Harry, and ISIS in. You know, this was an agenda. Um, it wasn't just in incompetent people. You know, humanitarian people who did it by accident and couldn't see this coming. This has happened in history time and time again. Open borders equals chaos so the global you know globalism has used the left and hijacked it to bring this in and these you know these counter movements like hansen and trump and all the others that we discussed in europe are uh bringing down you know they're bringing down globalism uh, so obviously uh a lot of what the the left has promoted uh, political correctness uh, uh ident identity politics i mean uh, this is you know, uh, these are quite really sinister and uh, and controlling ideas. I mean, what what sort of we, we've discussed some of them a bit, but what's <coughs> what what sort of areas concern you the most about the the left's agenda that you wanted to elaborate a bit more on? Well, I think you know what what encompasses under um, I know I've probably said political correctness a hundred times in this, but that's what it is. Um, you know, 
its cultural Marxism encompasses all, you know, sort of minority against a majority. So this is, you know, feminism, Islam, LGBT community, which is, you know, LGBT community is, is probably the least of my worries in, in my opinion. And But Black Lives Matter is, is shocking. The Antifa is, is shocking. These are um, horrible ideas and we have to be able to criticise these bad ideas. There's a... I mean, there's a great um, picture here. I'm not sure if you've heard about um, Jordan Peterson in in Canada, who was uh, um, talking. Who was a big voice. He's a, uni- a professor at university yes, in Canada. Yes. In- uh, yeah, so uh, trying to uh, he's refusing to use the the pronouns, which I think they're actually yeah. trying to pass a law in Canada, which means that you have to call people by their the pronouns. Proper- yeah, it, which- it passed. It passed. I, I heard that it passed the the House of Commons, but has it actually passed the the upper house as well? Oh well, I've heard it passed. Lauren Southern said it passed in Canada, so she she kind of is up to date with that stuff. I'm assuming she's from Canada. But just to give the listeners a bit of an idea, jo- uh, Jordan Peterson, um, you know, was uh, you know talking about this movement uh, sort of you know against political correctness. He's actually done. Uh, and against these movements in particular, you know, Islam apologists really, it's not even Muslims I have a problem with, it's the, the apologists that want them, that want mass Muslim illegal immigration, LGBT and, and BLM. So, you know, what I was just going to read to you here is uh, he came up with this, he, he and at the university and his team researched into the biological effects that, um, the biological uh, sort of traits that actually affect your political outlook and your behaviour. And he identified this, this sort of radical Marxist left, the fascist sort of left, as people with, first of all, low verbal ability, which is, I'm pretty sure we've all come across that before. Um, and also, you know, they, they as soon as they see a victim, they don't have to have, vali- the victim does not need validity to their sort of outrage. Okay, when it comes to being oppressed by the system, they're like a, a an overprotective mother. So when a mother has a child, and you know when that child, the analogy is if the if a mother you know has a small child, the child's crying. Um, that child doesn't need any sort of um, uh, reason uh, to be upset or you know justification. We will feel sorry for them, you know, and we will try and you know. Uh, comfort, you know, those that your your mother will try and comfort the the baby. So this is um, where where this comes in. They're seeing a victim. They've uh, identified themselves as victims oppressed oppressed by, you know, anybody who's a majority, um, and they're enabling their own, uh, you know, victimhood culture. So just quickly here, this is a great sort of method of how the neo progressive social justice, you know, works. These okay. things. It sounds like yeah, definitely an interesting, in, in, interesting study. I mean, uh, the result uh, results that you've just gone through they ser- they certainly uh, don't uh, don't surprise me. Yeah, exactly. I think we've all uh, you know come into contact with that. So l- listen to this. This is uh, you know re- really interesting by Jordan Peterson. He says the the first uh, neo progressive social justice method. Uh, number one, identify a human activity. Number two, note a distribution of success. Identify losers and winners. Number three, claim the losers are only losing because they're constantly oppressed by the winners. No concrete evidence of this oppression needs to exist. The differential distribution of outcomes among groups itself is assumed to be irrefutable evidence. This is exactly what happened when I bumped into these cultural Marxists on and run them all on Friday. They scream oppression. They don't know. Who, they want the one percent to pay for everything uh, in a socialist society, but they don't know who the one percent is, or that the fact the one percent may have actually worked hard to get there, right? Themselves. These Marxists have never worked in a day in their life, so <clears throat> it's quite easy for them to try and make money selling their books. Um, but because they don't work, they obviously want these free handouts from, you know, by stealing uh, money off off the one percent because. Because the one percent is making more money, that they have to, uh, you know, be oppressed. The, the reason is being oppressed. Uh, I sometimes wonder where they get all this money to print their books and ha- have all this uh, spare time to do all these things. 
Yeah, I would. I would really love to fan out. I actually, uh, I heard a, a bit of a. Um, I'm not sure whether it was true, but I heard rumours that there's about ten of them living in the same house. They're, they're, they're literally a cult. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it sounds like Alistair Crowley's house. So anyway, let me let me finish this off. So, um, so basically, they proclaim institutions must. So after the, uh, you know, identifying winners and losers and having no evidence to, you know, obviously back up the fact that the winners are oppressing the losers. They just say winners are oppressing losers, that's it. Proclaim, pro, uh, proclaim institutions must intervene to punish the winners <clears throat> and reward the losers. Number five, feel secure in your Marxist comprehension of the world. Number six, revel in your sense of moral superiority as you target constant moral indignation at the winners. Seven, repeat forever, everywhere. And that is the perfect explanation of what we see, what we're seeing with relation to the question that you asked, um, the promotion of you know the, a lot of these uh, sinister ideas. Which one concerns me the most? It's the um, Marxists, Marxist ideology and this progressive neo you know social ideology that you know feminism, Islam, LGBT, BLM. They're all vast minorities, all pretty much below ten percent in Western countries. But they are, they have a very well formulated method of getting them to get their way and win and bring down the majority. We'll definitely have to um, provide a link for that uh, that that study in the the show notes page. Um, that's about time all, all the time we've we've got for for today's show. So uh, I'd like to to thank you, Brendan, for for being our guest this week. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for having me on, Tim. We'll you know talk soon, and we'll swap uh, podcasts later. Yeah, and, and it's definitely good that we're 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 not despairing uh, as much anymore. There's there's quite a bit of optimism in the world. Well, as long as people like me, people like you, people like Ryan Fletcher at XYZ keep doing what we're doing, um, you know, we're, we're providing a voice for people that have been forgotten by, um, you know, been left behind by this um, sinister sort of political correct movement that's that's happening luckily a lot of these radicals aren't really getting listened to um it's safely ignored but other, others on the other hand uh you know it's infecting our institutions it's infecting schools the media is completely and totally gone um but it's coming back pauline hansen is, is gonna you know she's gonna champion the movement cora bernardi it's happened with trump it's happened with brexit um and it's happening in australia and we, we need to get on this uh, get on this train get on the trump train Yep, definitely. So don't forget, everyone, uh, check out zero-filter.com on a regular basis. Uh, like them on Facebook and also check out their YouTube channel as well. We'll all link to this on the, the show notes page. So that's the show. Uh, I'll be back next week for an, another review show. Plenty has happened already this week, so I'm sure there'll be a lot to talk about then. So don't forget to keep visiting theunshackled.net for, for all the latest news and subscribe to the show either on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio and YouTube and we'll see you next time.